This is Jerry Mason, the Kickin' Lawyer, and I'm inviting everyone to join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. on the Kicking Lawyer fan page on Facebook for Law Talk Live, where we discuss business, politics, current events, and the law. If you miss the live version, you can watch the playback on YouTube or listen on your favorite podcast platform. All right, I think we're up. This is Jerry Mason, the Kicking Lawyer. Appreciate you guys taking time, whether you're watching or listening, depending on the uh, platform. Hopefully, we've got sound and everything this time. Uh, we'll get to my guest here in just a moment. I want to remind you, as always, if you haven't, to please like, follow, subscribe across platforms on social media and podcast platforms. Uh, we got old episodes and a bunch of new stuff coming up. Uh, we're, all, we're on TikTok. On the TikTok, we do a lot of videos on legal advice. There's clips from the podcast. Almost then, to 10,000. And then Josh dances a lot. It's a lot of Josh dances. That's not true. Don't dance. <laughs> and then we have coming up October, what is it? The, the 11th. The 11th. October 11th is our 100th episode. It'll be a fundraiser. So hopefully you guys will tune into that. We're going to have several guests. A lot of cool stuff planned for that. So hopefully if you're um, available, watch it live and you can commit to doing uh, some charity stuff. And then, of course, we want to thank Michelle Allen. She's our long-time long sponsor, and she's your go-to in this area if you're trying to buy, sell, rent, real estate. She's also genuinely a pretty good person, so uh, give her a call if you need some assistance. And, of course, Mason's High Octane Martial Arts has been open since 93, creating uh, kicking lawyers and black belts alike, so you can uh, visit us there. And then, of course, the Cellar Restaurant and Prohibition Bar is located here in Covington, just off the square. And we have tons of events going on there coming up. I wanted to take some time to tell you about them. We have tonight, every Tuesday, we have live trivia. After this, I'll be going there to run that. Uh, we've got the Heritage Festival stuff that's is coming up this weekend. Thursday's the Farm to Table Dinner. You still get tables for that, uh, uh, tickets for that. that are $50, and they're available at the Farmer's Market, the Cellar, and the Tipton County Chamber of Commerce. Um, and then Saturday, we're open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, not just for the Heritage Festival, but because we're also hosting a Taekwondo tournament Saturday at the Covington Sportsplex. So there'll be a lot of people in the area that'll hopefully come try the restaurant out. And then on October 1st, we have, of course, every Friday we have live music. So we have live music Friday. October 1st, we have a luau followed by a stand-up open mic comedy night. So there's just a tons of stuff going on. Make sure you follow the seller's page. You can keep up with all that. And Josh will be glad to help you with some digital marketing at Masonite Digital Marketing. He'll be glad to help you accelerate your brand. And so uh, joining me today, Mr. Dylan has actually been on the podcast sort of before. <laughs> But it's Dylan Scott. How you doing? I'm doing right. How are you? Good. And I've talked to him before, but really talked more with your, I guess, fiance now, right? Oh uh, yeah. Good. Well, good job locking that down too, man. I was oh, getting yeah. nervous you were gonna let it slip away. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was hard to you know uh, express my feelings towards her because you know she was a really good friend to start out with. And yeah. She's just breathtakingly beautiful. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you got you got to jump when the opportunity is is there. Uh, yeah. So you're yeah. you both you seem like a nice guy, and she's really nice. So she's very nice, talented. Right. So I'm glad you guys have finally started taking steps towards that. When's the when's the wedding? Uh, next November, trying to do the fifth or the sixth or uh -huh. whatever we can get. We can't book the venue until this November because they can't do it till a year out. So mm -hmm. that's the huh. plan right now. Sweet. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. And Definitely so you got a lot of first over here, Dylan. I've had people with the masks and stuff on, that includes you, but I don't know that I've had anybody with the shades. Okay. And like I said beforehand, when you got me and you, and then I guess we could add Josh in there in one room, there's just too much sexy. <laughs> I don't know the cameras can handle it all. And then Dylan brought some cigars, and he was nice enough to offer them. Yeah. Uh, but I, so, man, I'm, I, I, apparently you're a cigar guy. You like cigars? Yeah. Um, I haven't been smoking for very long. I was, at least it doesn't seem like it, but... Um... I don't call myself an expert on it, but I asked Josh, I said, hey, um, is smoking and drinking on the podcast okay? He said, actually, it's encouraged. Like, hell yeah, I'm going to bring some stuff. And I thought you already smoked. I don't know why, because every time when I, where we came over here, we uh, went to this back part, which is haunted, apparently. Yeah, yeah. And it was always like these ashtrays, and it smells like cigar smoke. And like, well, okay. Probably because pretty much everyone else in the Everybody else does. smokes. Yeah. Everybody but you. I think there's me and one other person that don't. Everybody else does. My partner, Brian, smokes a lot of cigars. I get you. Uh, now, I do drink bourbon, and uh, I have drank Guinness. Our brother, Justin, I think Guinness is his favorite, actually. Yeah, I got Guinness right here. Yeah. 
but I have to go run trivia tonight, and I'm also on a special diet because I have to get naked for this Rocky play again. <laughs> so I'm trying to be real mindful of everything that I uh, put, at least till after Halloween. Yeah, probably Guinness yeah. is the worst beer to drink if you're trying to lose weight. So yeah, I understand. That's all good. But I think yeah, I appreciate you being thoughtful and coming in like that. Yeah, and you're welcome to be as comfortable as you want. So some people aren't going to know you, those who don't. Uh, now, I know you from being in some of Josh's stuff. You've done other stuff. You do acting. You cosplay. Um, of course, you have a beautiful fiance who's been on here, Sarah. So tell us something, some stuff about yourself. What's your background? What do you do? All that. Uh, well, I am a full-time mechanic as we speak right now. I'm actually fairly new to it. Uh, it's been kicking my butt lately. Um, as far as background... I'm not really anything special, you know. I didn't get into cosplay until you know, it was already. Mm, what year was it? About 2012, and I was already dressing up before I even knew what cosplay was. I had made my own Joker outfit from the thrift store, and like a year after I started doing that, like just dressing up in my room by myself for no reason, I was like figured out what cosplay was because that's when they had internet access finally. I was like, yeah. oh, cool, internet exists. Other people do this. Yeah, other people do this and it has a name. Yeah. It's like, okay, so, you know, I still wasn't able to go to a, a con or anything because it wasn't until I got into college about three years later and I moved to Memphis and then we had uh, MCFC. That's the first con I ever went to. So that's how I got into that. Same, same here. When was your first MCFC? Uh, 2014. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, that was uh, one time I was in your video for the first time. It was uh, that's right, a cosplay yeah. video. I was uh, Deathstroke. Yeah, we didn't even know each other. I just ran up and was like, I was like filming this random Deathstroke guy. <laughs> yeah, there's this guy in this blue shirt. Uh, but yeah, I got hooked in after that. So I'm just, you know, pretty much part of my personality is just being a geek right now. Um, yeah, I'm really big into horror, too. And yeah, so you've been on here before, but in costume. As, so, yeah. as Michael Myers. Yeah. yeah, we had the Halloween special that was so awkward because I have all these horror characters on there, and the only one that really talks was Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you had to figure out how to do the interview with everybody just hanging out there. Yeah. When, I get, when I get that mask on, I, it's hard for me to get out of character. I don't know why. It's just really hard for me to do that. Um, like, even when I'm out, like, at mm, working haunts and stuff, like, if I'm, I'm, I'm full costume. I can't break character no matter what. Like, even the kids that I work in there, and they harass the crap out of me. I, I respect that. So I have a side story. I don't know if Ed listens to this or not. He probably don't want me bringing this up, but I'm going to bring it up because I thought it was hilarious. So, <laughs> Josh, you don't know this. But but last year, remember I played the Grinch? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so a couple of years in a row. And, you know, I, made a, I actually misspoke a week or two ago. I was talking to somebody about how I'd never cosplayed until this budget Batman thing. That's actually not true. Because now that you said what you said about you just dress up, I've been a ninja before. I have I have dressed up in a lot of different stuff and, uh, in, in essence, cosplayed without saying I was cosplaying. But in any event, for the last couple of years, our town square has a, um, a Dickens Christmas. It's Dickens Christmas on the square. It's pretty cool. The, they decorate like, you know, it's, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the guy's name? George, is it, what is his first like name? Charles, Charles Dickens. Dickens, thank yeah. you. They uh -huh. decorate like that era, Charles Dickens era. Uh -huh. And then they have, uh, you know, like a Grinch guy. I was the Grinch guy. And they have a Scrooge guy. Anyway, all that stuff running around. So anyway, when I'm in the, when I'm the Grinch, I'm the Grinch. So like I go around, I'm screwing with people. I'm talking, you know, like the Grinch does. It's the same type stuff. So get this, Josh. I get told that they decided that they had a meeting on it and they're going to do this. They're going to do it. There's even more money there and all this is going to be great. <laughs> and then he says, oh, and uh, they do want you to do the Grinch again. I was like, okay, it's fine. Because I do it as a volunteer anyway. And uh, it's actually, it's usually kind of inconvenient because it's on like a Saturday or Sunday when I could be doing other stuff. Right. So anyway, last year, this guy who's known as a, he's like the town crier or town caller guy. I didn't even know what it was. Like, I'm driving around in my car in the Grinch outfit, right? And I start kind of screwing with this guy who's got a thing. Uh, he's yelling this stuff. Like, like megaphone or something? Yeah, kind of. I don't, I don't know even if he had the megaphone, but he was standing there and he was very official doing his yelling. Well, I'm kind of screwing with him because I'm the Grinch. Right. You know, I'm kind of in his way. I think I was honking the horn the whole time, like stuff like that. So they tell me that... The one um, caveat is that if I'm the Grinch, I can't interact with the town caller. 
this guy was apparently so offended by the Grinch last year because it was such a big deal <laughs> that uh, it's fine, but that I can't interact with the town crier, whatever his name is. So I, apparently it's been a whole year, and I'd completely forgotten about it, and this guy was that bothered by it. But my point was, what I want, what you would understand is when I'm in that character, I'm that character. Oh, yeah. So I do what that character does. And uh, the Grinch screwed with well, everybody. Well, what we should do is we should have a Christmas-themed creepy panda guy with a Santa costume on, and yeah. he can go interact with that guy since he doesn't want to interact with the Grinch. Well, so. I probably shouldn't have said that. I wasn't sworn to secrecy <laughs> or anything about it, but I thought it was hilarious because it literally didn't even click on my, like, I didn't even think about it because I was messing with so many people. Right. But then just to think about that that person was that bothered by that interaction, you know, when... <laughs> I was just being the Grinch, man. Right. I was just doing the Grinch. <laughs> That's the whole thing about cosplay, actually, is, you know, whenever I first got into it, at least uh, back before it got really mainstream, I guess, cosplay was supposed to be like costume play. Not only did you dress up as a character, but you were that character while you were in that costume. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays it's like, oh, well, anybody could cosplay. Well, yeah, but, you know, you're just technically dressing up. But you know, people that cosplay when it first started out, was like, okay, uh, you're Darth Vader. You have the suit on, but you are uh, doing the floss. That's not very Darth Vadery. So, you know, that's that's what uh, I got into whenever I started cosplaying. Like when I did the Joker, I got into character all the time, mm -hmm. and I I did it for years, and it was really um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tiresome because mm -hmm. that character has a lot of energy and whatnot, and doing it for so many years, I had to retire it because I got tired. I was just so um, Exhausted after cons, especially when I dressed up as the Joker and you know doing that laugh. So it's got to be rough on your voice too, man. Oh yeah, yeah. that's why my voice sounds like this <clears throat> right now. Actually, <laughs> that's not true. So yeah, well, um, I think it's kind of a form of acting, really. Yeah, you know, cosplay. It's almost like mime. You know, pantomime is acting when they're doing whatever out, but it's still acting. And I think people take that for granted that it's uh, it's really acting. And and if you look at the competitions, most of the people that do better in competition, part of you know, because that's one of the factors they're graded on, is they perform. You know, they're the character, so oh, yeah. you got to play the role. Especially when they have those costume contests at the mm -hmm. end, and they have like a skit. I love seeing that stuff, but like if this is somebody you know that has like bunny ears on, they're out there just dancing. It's like, eh, I don't want to see this. I want to see somebody going out there reenacting a part of a film they're in, uh, their characters in, and whatnot. Like, um, uh, what did I see one time? Oh yeah, it was actually Predator. Uh, so it's from the comic books actually. It was two Predator characters. One was a female, one was a male, and they were like duking it out. And at the end, she like ripped his head off, and actually his whole mask came off, and it was like part of the skit. Like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Because you didn't see his head after he got the mask popped mm -hmm. off. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, you know, and I've also seen some ones with, like, Mortal Kombat where they would, like, bring out this, like, uh, freeze spray as Sub-Zero and he'd, like, freeze Scorpion and then do the uppercut. It's like, okay. You know, sometimes it's kind of, like, it's kind of cringy to watch, but you, mm -hmm. you got to appreciate it. It's, it's, it's some hard work and dedication and a lot of guts to do that. I couldn't do that. I could be, like, talking this microphone. So what what's the interest <laughs> in the horror genre? Because I've had several of you guys on. It's, it's always Josh's friends that are all into <laughs> all, horror. All of my friends are into horror for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, my love from horror uh, for horror actually stemmed from my childhood, obviously. I didn't like horror. Uh, but, you know, I watched so many B-flick movies with my dad that were horror movies. And they still scared me, even though they were trash. And that's kind of what it was. Is just, you know, it's, it's a lot of memories towards my dad, I guess. I mean, he's still alive, obviously, but... You know, that's it. It reminds me of child, my childhood a lot. Cause you know, I used to be terrified of, of Michael Myers. Like I couldn't even see the mask. Mm -hmm. Like it would scare me. And now, I've you know been subjected to it so many times and pretty much forced myself to like it after the, over the years. And uh, now I have three masks staring at me when I'm sleeping. So, uh, and also that you know going to haunted houses with my dad too. It, uh, everything that involved horror. For the most part, involved me and my dad. Yeah. So you know, my mom was involved a little bit too, but you know, more more than more than ever is my dad and you know us going out and dressing up, going to haunted houses, and him telling me stories of him going to a haunted house. Actually, yeah. Funny story. Um, he worked a haunted house one time, and he his job was to go underneath a wall and grab people's legs when they came by. This is before people could like touch you or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Before people started suing or whatnot. 
So he did that one time, and he got this kid really good, and the kid got really scared and ran off, and then, you know, a couple minutes passed by, so he he thinks the coast is clear, so he's going to poke his head back out, make sure no one's there. And the kid's waiting there and just kicks some crap at him in the face. <laughs> and he, didn't, he didn't feel too good after that, but I always thought that was funny. Um, but we, we hosted haunted houses back at my the old location, Martial Arts School. We used to do it every year, and we, we, we'd open it to the community. And what we would do is hang up this big plastic, black plastic, and then create basically like a maze through there. And we had each room, and we did that. We had people hiding, and they would grab them and whatnot. We had to quit doing it, though, because one year this 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 larger lady got super scared and ran through the whole thing. She ran through the walls and, like, uh, knocked kids over, and there were kids covered in the plastic, and it was, it, oh, was, it was pretty bad. But, yeah, so anyway. Yeah, I actually went to a haunted house dressed up as a Joker a couple of times, and they got scared of me sometimes, and I was like, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> one time, actually, I went to, uh, what's it called? Shelby Farms, where mm-hmm. they have the haunted trail. Yeah, and I went in there dressed up as a Joker, and it's like walking through their little maze, and it was it was bad because first of all, there's a bunch of 17 year old kids that work there mm-hmm. running around, and one of them ended up smacking me in the face. So you know, you know, they have no sense of uh, organization whatsoever. They don't know how to run it, and they, and they hit me, and I, you know, I'm not like bleeding or anything, but I'm, I'm kind of upset. You know, I love horror, and I love going to haunted houses, not to get scared, mm-hmm. but you know, I go there. I get hit in the face. I don't want that. So I go talk to somebody. I said, hey, uh, someone hit me in the face. You got a bunch of kids running around and not knowing what they're doing. He said, well, you could. You're dressed like that. They thought you were part of the act. It's like, oh, so y'all beat the crap out of each other too? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Josh, you were talking about wanting to go to that one in Texas, didn't you, uh, where they get to sign a waiver? Well, no, I think it's in Illinois. Illinois. Oh, yeah, yeah Illinois. something in Illinois. Yeah. You're probably thinking of Texas Frightmare Weekend, which is the convention I'm going to oh, in May. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, well, excited. what is the one in the Illinois? Don't you have to sign a uh, waiver or yeah, something to do I it? I think it's in Illinois. Hold on, I'll look it up real quick. Uh, now, is it actually haunted or is it like people working there? Haunted. I don't know. House. There, I know a couple of like mental institu- institutions, I can't speak right now, that you can spend the night in and they like pay you or something. I think it's the, the Midnight Terror Haunted House. Yeah, I think it's an actual, like, like, not like a real haunted house, but they do stuff. Like in each room, it's like an advancement, I think. through The, the one that I saw it was several rooms and it gets worse and worse and worse if you make it through there and they try to get you to quit. Oh, yeah. Borderline, like, torture stuff. Well, so. I know about the McCanny Manor or McCanny, whatever you call it, but uh, mm-hmm. that thing is terrible. It's like made headlines national headlines multiple times because it's pretty it is legal uh i don't know if i would say legal but it's pretty much torture yeah and you know they say okay well if you make it through i think it's like six hours long or something like that if you make it through all uh, the whole time and whatnot uh you get money or something back or money back i don't know but you had to put it you, you, you get on a wait list for like two years almost mm-hmm. just to get in well people, people do it willingly i don't know why I heard of one, I don't know which one, maybe the one you're talking about, maybe a different one, but there's one where uh, it was like if you make it all the way through because it's so horrible, you get like $25,000. And then they had a guy who was like a ex-Navy SEAL or something who yeah, actually did, and then right before, yeah, right before it you made it through, them, they they pulled it and said, oh, no, they, they like stopped it before it you made it all the way through. It was two Navy SEALs, and yeah. it wasn't nothing scary. They were putting them in ice baths pretty much, and they were about to go through uh, hypothermia and almost die. So ah. it's nothing scary. It's not a haunted house. Yeah, it's just it's torture. It's just torture. It yeah. is stupid. By the way, y'all, we have a law talk first. This is the first time this has ever happened. But we actually had somebody write into the show. So I'm going to give this to Jerry for him to read out, uh, oh, cool. read off. <laughs> I transcribed it. They texted in and told me to write it. It says, hi, Dylan. It's oh. Lobo. Your future wife and you are, and some guy I do not know have killed me on camera. Congratulations on the upcoming wedding. I totally will kill all of you on camera eventually. But in the meantime, what color underwear is required for the bachelor party? Sincerely, Lobo. Uh, bachelor party. Uh, there is no underwear. I, I um, hope that you know who that's from. That's Bronson Colbert, by the way. He's been on the show before. Remember him and uh, Eric Crimmins were on together? I don't remember him being Lobo, though. Yeah, well, that's the name he goes by, but it's Bronson. Well, you know who Lobo is? El Santo Lobo. Yeah, the DC DC character. Oh, yeah. so there's a different Lobo that he's... Uh, that, that was his uh, wrestling It was his wrestling name, name back, back in the day. In the day. Yeah. He was like a Lucha Libre kind of style wrestler. Oh. He had a mask on and everything. You know, his name was El yeah. he, He's watching, too. He's in the chat. <laughs> oh. Well, that's interesting. I, I don't know that underwear are required for the Bachelor it's Party. Not, it's not required. Yeah, it's optional. Nothing but a smile. <laughs> that's why people always joke with me about uh, 
the if why don't I show up in my Rocky outfit from doing Rocky Horror, mm. which is just gold trunks, and I'm like I'm always wearing them. Like you know, there I you got go. them on right now. I'm always Rocky red. There's <laughs> always that part of the costume that sticks with you for the rest of your life. Well, do you have any formal response to Lobo? Uh, I don't even know what the bachelor par- bachelorette party is going or bachelor party is going to be. I don't even know. All right, let me ask you that. I'm curious what your position is on this because I I've changed my view from my own personal bachelor party. But do you believe in the? Uh, I don't know if you and Sarah have talked about it. The doing them together. That you do the bachelor and bachelorette party, you go together, you're together, and go do the bachelor I, bachelorette party I together. Never heard about that. Um, never thought about it. Never talked about it. Actually, I don't even know if Sarah knows about that. She probably does. She knows more than me. Yeah. But you know. Well, it's something y'all have to think through. Not that you should do that. I, I did that in my second marriage. I got you. And high, hindsight, we probably shouldn't have done it. The, <laughs> the reason that we, it was my recommendation, I think, and it was because I was jealous. Uh, back then, and uh, if I had been a full-grown a man, adult man, I would have been like, "You do you, I'll do me." It'd been fine. Right. But hindsight, yeah, it was fine. We had fun, but yeah, it, we did a co-bachelor bachelorette party together. Yeah. By the way, Dylan, uh, Sarah says, "Take your glasses off." <laughs> She's in the chat. But I'm really cool looking right now. You got to admit. And then uh, William Russell, who's also been on the show, the comic book artist, he said, "Is it bright in there?" <laughs> yes, it's very bright actually. And Sarah says Bronson, so she knew who Lobo yeah. was. The, mo- so. the main reason why I'm wearing my sunglasses is I just got off of work, and it was a long day, so I got I was you know tired looking nice. Well, you know what? People can get over it. I wear stuff all the time that's random and Bye. like a little extra, and it's fine. Oh my gosh, it's so bright! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> now he has to gaze into my eyes. Ah uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you should watch right back. Here. It's one of my favorite ones we did. You got to get dude back on, Josh. Oh, I'm working on it. Don't we worry. We had uh, <laughs> we had Eric Presley on. The guy that's an Elvis impersonator, uh-huh. but he he literally dresses like Elvis all the time. So oh. it's not a cosplay to him. He's Elvis, right? Okay. So it's his personality, and he he's done a lot. Like he was a professional cosplayer, and he's done performances and recorded stuff back in the day. Well, anyway, um, he was on here, and he's the first one I had to do any music. So he's sitting where you're sitting, and he wants to know if I could if he could play something. I was like, yeah, go ahead. So he starts to play this love song, and the problem was we were looking at each other, right? There you go. And so. I was like, we I, we didn't plan this, but he's not looking away. I'm not going to look away. So we were literally staring in each other's eyes the whole time during this love Almost song. like a game of chicken. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I was like, I ain't looking away. And he's like, I ain't looking away. Oh my it, it, it was definitely um, not a heterosexual experience. What is, he do, what is he doing in his full time? Like, I'm not sure what he does work-wise. We didn't really get into it. He was a very interesting cat. Uh, but he literally dresses like Elvis all the time. It was by far the most interesting episode we've ever had of a long time. It was pretty, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Hopefully he just, you know, dresses as Elvis and doesn't do the Elvis stuff that he was. <clears throat> I hired him the same week after we did it to come and be the entertainment on this uh, party bus I rented last year to take the, all the staff to. the. It was, I, I did this every quarter. They, If we hit goals, they got to go on an excursion. The whole business did. And so they didn't know what it was. And so I had a big party bus pulled up with stripper poles and stuff in it and had bought them uh, <laughs> drinks and food, and then he was there to entertain them. So while we're riding this bus with these lights, disco lights going on, he's singing Elvis songs and dancing <laughs> to everybody. And then the party bus broke down. And then, well, we threw axes, and the party bus broke down, and then somebody, I won't say who they were, ended up crapping out in a tree. And, uh, it was, it was, it was a night to night. remember. I bet. In, anyway, so he was, uh, he was an interesting cat that we had. So what cosplays are you doing now? I know Sarah's doing a lot of princess stuff. Yeah, uh, well, she's been doing that for birthday parties and whatnot. Just, uh, stuff she's, uh, it's really cool. You know, she's making money, help, helping out kids, and sometimes she goes to the bond or two, and it's yeah. awesome. Uh, I don't think I have the, the willpower to ever do that. You know, I have a soft spot for kids and whatnot. Uh, but as far as cosplays, I've been, you know, dialing back a lot lately. Um, I've been, you know, just revamping some horror stuff because October's coming up. Get ready for... Uh, working on it trails i'm actually working on a full scale uh machete that's made of real metal uh-huh. for uh jason because uh, when i'm working on haunted houses i have a little sheath on my leg that i put the machete through and whenever i pull it out there's like a little horse bit right there that's metal and when i pull it out it goes shing and it scares the crap out of people and like i love that i had another machete last year that made the same noise but it's like this small so like you know the one from the uh, jason i'm dressing up as is like huge mm-hmm. it's 23 inches i think so uh, i'm working on that um i'm actually trying to sell a freddy krueger costume if anybody wants that's on my ebay page um as far as 
cosplay plans that I have next year, I'm working on a Predator costume, actually. Man, that's pretty involved, then. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait to force you into a Predator fan film with that one, Dylan. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to force you into doing that. You know, there like, you go. <laughs> I actually wanted to talk about The Predator. Have y'all seen the uh, Prey movie yet? I liked it. I loved it, yeah. yeah. I thought it was great. I liked it, too. So, did anyone see the movie before that? I've seen all I've the Predators. I've seen all the Predators, yeah. So, you yeah. all saw The Predator? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was terrible. Yes, it was very <laughs> bad. And someone, Which one was that? That was the one where they had the decent cast, but terrible They're, they're in, like, a neighborhood. It ends with, like, a oh, cyborg yeah, 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 predator. Yeah, yeah. No, it had a big giant one in it. Yeah, 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 yeah it was like Someone it. asked me, it's like, you know, if you could describe why it's so bad, uh, what could you use? And I said, you know, what they got rid of, the main thing that made the Predator movies, the Predator, was the stalking. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in the Predator movie, that the one that sucked... Is like he just shows up. He's there. There's no mm-hmm. no no horror, no suspense. People forget that because you know the first movie was an Arnold movie, '80s action movie. They thought, but actually it's a horror movie mm-hmm. in my opinion, like a sci-fi horror movie. It's so like they Alien. Got, yeah, they got rid of that horror uh, aspect whatsoever. Which is funny you say Alien because that's the same reason why the Alien versus Predator movie sucked because mm-hmm. they got rid of the horror act, aspect yeah. and the whole thing. But yeah, I didn't like the Predator movie was so much. Uh, so you know when I saw Prey, I was like. That's pretty good. I mean, I it was it was good enough for me to look over the whole fact that a ninety pound woman was able to manhandle a bunch of men and whatnot. But well, I thought they did a good job though playing up how because he underestimated her. Right. You know, he didn't think she was a threat. Right. And um and then you know they played that before they did it in the one where they find the pyramid, the alien versus that was predators, alien versus predator. and it yeah. had the one uh, female lead in it, and he underestimated her. Same thing. And mm-hmm. then they team up in right. that one. So um, yeah, he uh, he uh, she kills a, a xenomorph technically. So there's like mm-hmm. this ritual, ritual from the predator tribe. What they're called? I don't know. If you, I don't know how y'all pronounce it, but I call it Yaucha. That's mm-hmm. their species name. And there's this like a uh, thing called blooding. It's uh, whenever you kill your first xenomorph as a, uh, a Yaucha, and they uh, mark your skin as your like you know uh, trophy for killing this first xenomorph. Which is, that's what the aliens are called. If anyone's listening, that's uh, aliens are called xenomorphs. So I actually didn't mind the first AVP movie. I'll tell you what, the second one I thought was horrible. The second one sucked so bad because of the god awful uh, teenage drama they put in the middle yeah. of the whole thing. It was probably honestly the second one's probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But you know. yeah, I, you know it's funny you talk about how you were raised and the reason you have the interest in the horror movies and the cosplay now is because your relationship with your father. Well, Josh will attest to this. We grew up on 80s action movies. Yep, 100%. So, I mean, I every weekend <laughs> we were at an 80s action movie. So, uh, you know, all the Arnold, all the Sylvester Stallone, all the Jean-Claude Van Damme, all those, even the B and C budget movies, Dolph Lundgren stuff, all this, man, we watched all that, ate it up. And then I would go watch, you know, like, they, they were probably equivalent to fan films now, martial arts movies. Anything that had oh, yeah. ninjas in it or any of that, man. Bro, I love Bruce Lee. Dude. So our whole upbringing, and I think that's why now Josh has the affinity for these action films uh, when he makes them that's or a, watches it's them. It's 100% the reason yeah. why. And when, yeah. when like Expendables came out back in 2010, that was like a religious event dude, for like me. A fever dream. Yeah, 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 that was like the I watched greatest the, thing I still, ever. I watched all of those back every six months or so. Yeah. I just watched them a couple weekends the, ago. I think the first one was the best one. I would, yeah, yeah, I would agree. The second, Expendables 2, has the greatest first 10 minutes of any movie ever made. Though. It also has the best boss fight, because John Clyde Van Damme yes. was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. He did, he's got them kicks, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, like, I like the first one because, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stickler for, uh, what you call it, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a badass yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, he I'm broke like, uh, Stallone's to neck, that. too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. You can say whatever you like. Uh, the second one. The second one, uh, is the second one where Chuck Norris comes out? Yes. That, yeah, was, that was one of my too. favorite scenes. Yeah, was <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, uh, they're about to lose, and then the next thing you know, the Everything's wolf blowing comes up. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually used the Chuck Norris joke. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's like, uh, Sylvester Sloan, Barney, uh, he says, I heard you got bit by a rattlesnake. And he said, yeah. And after seven cru- excruciating days... The snake finally died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was funny. He did. Uh, so Sylvester, oh no, Chuck Norris, he started a fight league back, oh man, 15, 20 years ago now called the World Combat League. And back then I was training to fight in it. It's a kickboxing league. And it was trying to be competitive with UFC. And they had um, the, the there's like a pit that you would kickbox in. 
Anyway, I went to Las Vegas and was ringside and watched one of the fights, and it's his company, and he walked by, Chuck Norris did. Right. And it was funny because they were playing those jokes. So as he walks <laughs> by, you're hearing these jokes about him, and he's right there. And for me, as a martial arts guy, you know, he's this huge icon, so mm -hmm. nice guy. And I hear he's genuine. I, he's one of the only guys that I haven't met yet that uh, is in that whole world, and uh, I hear he's a really nice guy. Like, I met Jackie Chan. I met several of them in that genre. Right. Uh, but anyway, so he's somebody. And he ages that, so gracefully too. Yeah, he's what working on ninety. Like, I mean, all of them have. I mean, look, I don't know about the people watching. You know, I'm not doing. I don't do steroids or anything like that. I don't <laughs> think I'm old enough yet. But man, those dudes look great for their age. Well, oh, Stallone yeah. is all the HGH. You it's, know, yeah, you can did. tell because his hands yeah. and ears and nose are all still growing and big. Right. Right. But I mean. You know, and another thing, they've got people that are watching them. You know, they got people oh, yeah. that are monitoring their blood work and all that kind of stuff. That's what you need. But Stallone, Arnold, all of them, man, they're holding up well to be so old. Yeah. And they're doing another, uh, what was the Stallone movie that I heard they're doing? They're doing another, another Expendables. I, well, yeah, I was but, hoping they were going to do another one yeah. of those. Yeah. But I hear they were going to do, it was either a Rocky or a, it was another one of those movies. Well, those they were going to do Creed too. I think he actually stepped down from it or something like that. Creed, or Creed three. Whatever. Yeah, I don't think he's he's not going to be in Creed three. Yeah, my understanding. I think he didn't. Yeah. He, it was like Creed of different films or whatnot. Or it could, oh, yeah. I don't remember actually. My my like, guess is they'll open Creed three with some line or something stating that Rocky has passed or something. He'll yeah. just have passed off screen. Pretty you know? lame. Yeah, that, I agree. I think that's a dumb way to go out. But. Yeah, they tried to do that with the second one. It was like, oh, he's going to die. And like, Maybe they tried to kill him off. Cause like, let's just get rid of this man. That's, you know, I liked the really last uh, Rocky. I thought that was the best one. The one where the he's 2006. the boat. The one where he's the yeah. boat guy. Oh, you're talking about oh, Rambo. That's Rambo. Oh, Rambo, Rambo. not Rocky. Yeah. yeah, Rambo. That was the, the one, one he's before the, the last one. Yeah, that's that, Rambo. That was four. a lot better than the uh, last blood one. I, I do agree. He rips that guy's uh, was his throat. He yeah, rips the it, guy's. It was yeah. definitely the most brutal yeah. Rambo movie. He he took that R rated movie and uh, took that R rating and like ran with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He picked the guy up by his head. And then rips his throat out from behind him. The the part of that movie that frustrated me the most because it's such a, a accurate representation of people nowadays though was the part where he saves all of them from the pirates. He kills all those pirates. So why'd you shoot and, them? Yeah, and they yeah. they're like, we're gonna have to turn you in. Yeah, it's yeah. never right to take a life. And I'm like, you ungrateful. Oh, it makes my blood boil just thinking about it. I'm like, he saved your lives. You know, uh, <laughs> show appreciation. You know, instead you're gonna turn him in. It's so so dumb. But that's know, that's society nowadays. A funny story about that movie actually. I forget what country it takes place in, but it looks like Cambodia or something. Yeah, like that. apparently Stone Clone. It was a Burma. Lot of, he got a lot of death threats from that country. He's like, if you ever yeah. come to this country again for depicting us as killers, we're going to kill you. Well, that, that's why he made that movie. So it was Burma, and the reason he made that film was because he wanted to draw attention to what was going on over there because yeah. the media was kind of just ignoring it and shying away that. from all the atrocities that were happening over there. So he made that movie to shine a light on it. Oh, Dylan, this is my law partner, Brian Huffman. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, who Brian. does smoke cigars and drinks bourbon and uh, other well, things. Well, I brought four. If you want to have one, you're more welcome to it. i got to cut it right here. Excellent. See does that mic work, Josh? It does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's up. Well, let's see. Hello. Yeah, yeah it works. Sweet. Uh, it's falling off though. <laughs> you gotta hook the clamp. Brian, Brian's like the villain on Inspector Gadget or something when he comes on these podcasts because he's never on camera. You just hear his <laughs> voice off screen. Oh yeah, that voice. Yeah. Well, you, I, you know that's by design, right? I, yeah. I think a lot of it on like that that movie, uh, and then even nowadays where you have a lot of these mm. cancer cult, cancel culture stuff. I think I'll a lot of it good. is people don't understand that other people have a difference. You don't like these. Brian, I didn't even. I was, look, I told <laughs> what him in the world. Man? I told Dylan that I was going to tell him. He asked me before we started because he thought right. I had smoked, and I was like, "Nope, never smoked one." And then uh, that's actually not entirely true. I did in Brian's car one time. He took uh, me by and pressure. bought a cigar and wanted it was me a to really good one too. And wanted me to try to learn it to was smoke a, Carlos a cigar. And he was trying to teach me, and I won't tell you oh, what he said. It, it looked like I was terrible. doing, <laughs> but I was like, oh, it was I, terrible. Like it puff, was puffing like, this. It little, was like. Is that right? <laughs> no, it is not right. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Oh, you're allowing us to smoke in here? Well, I'm allowing yes. him to smoke in okay. here, so you can smoke too, Brian. <laughs> All right. Hey, this, okay. one, this one time. I first got into cigar smoking from the uh, mm. 99 cent cigarillos from the front desk, mm. uh, front counter at the gas station. And then after that, I started to you know, Yeah, that that, I, nice so cutter. when I was in high school, I was super hardcore into martial arts. 
And all I cared about was that. So I didn't want to do anything that I thought would affect my performance. And so I didn't ever, I just never smoked, never drank, none of that kind of stuff. I got you. I didn't, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke or anything until I was like 23. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was a good kid up until, you know, the stress. <laughs> so I applaud you for that. Cause I well, I've got my own vices, caffeine mainly. I, oh, dr yeah. I drink pre-workout yeah, pre -workout like it's water. It's funny. I didn't start drinking coffee until like uh, last year. I tried to drink some of the, uh, the, the, like what do you call them, lattes and all that, mm. but they're just so high calorie. You're very blessed over here, Dylan. I don't know how old you are, but you, you're relatively lean, and I doubt I you care much about what you eat. I, me and Josh have the worst genetics. Ever. I can think about pizza right now, and I will gain weight. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm 28. Uh, I've actually been working out pretty uh, hardcore lately, and uh, me I too. Went from, <laughs> <laughs> I went from 185 to uh, 205 in the past couple of months, and you know. I'm hoping, hopefully, most of it's muscle. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you look, you look, you look thick enough there, Dylan. Thank you, thank you. I've been trying to, you know, get enough muscles. I don't have to wear male muscle suits when I'm wearing uh, yeah. Jason and whatnot for. Oh, I'm trying to get down lean enough that I could actually wear a Superman outfit and not look like a fat budget Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you look like uh, the Christopher Reeve Superman. Yeah, That's yeah. Well, he, he, he was bad. pretty jacked. Yeah, though. he was for for back then. He was. You saw sure. like behind the scenes photos of him working out. He's pretty jacked. He like. He, yeah, they said he gained like 20 pounds or something. Oh yeah. To be because he wanted to look the part. He didn't want to be muscle suited up. Like, what do you think? Do you watch the DC stuff? Um, like after. You know, they butchered Justice League. You know, I'm I, talking I, about the shows. Oh, the shows. Like, have you watched the Superman Their show? shows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's uh, a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I don't watch TV, so no. Oh, well, you're, yeah, you, <laughs> you're not smart. missing a lot. Yeah. Do, I watch it on HBO Max. I used to watch the, uh, you know, the the Arrow movie or the mm -hmm. Arrow show when it came out. I thought it was pretty good until season three. Yeah, it just started getting three. crazy, man. All of them did that. Like, Flash was the same way. It was yeah. good in the beginning, and then it started spiraling downhill. Dude, I, I've been seeing, like, after I start wa stopped watching The Flash, I start seeing these, like, clips on YouTube and whatnot. And, like, I see this one video of uh, The Flash and some other Flash fighting an evil Flash, but they all have, have, like, lightning lightsabers. Like, what is going on here? I'm glad I got out whenever, you know, Yeah, I, I saw the the writing on the wall pretty much Brian doesn't watch superhero movies no I do not have you seen any of the Marvel movies nope it's probably not probably good though it's probably best that you because you know, I, I actually want to talk about that too the whole Marvel movies nowadays because my goodness they have gone downhill really fast. yeah the quality control on this new phase of movies has not been good I saw <laughs> well it seems like they're trying to knock out as many as possible yeah well they just make so much money on all of them it's yeah, like uh, Spaceballs like, Spaceballs 2 the, the quest search for, for more, more money, money. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I saw the word "Love and Thunder." It's funny because Sarah, cause Sarah says that it sounds like a porno film. Was like, yeah, yeah. I guess so. It's got about it's got <laughs> so about some of the that they were hanged in there. <laughs> yeah. I I liked it okay. I did think of they went a little too over the top on the campiness for Thor. Very much so. But um, I will say, She Hulk I, has uh, some of the worst CGI I've ever seen yeah, in anything. You know, it's a, <laughs> she Hulk's a show? lawyer, yeah. right? You've she's a, she's it. a lawyer, so I was like, okay, great, and it's not good at all. Nice. I've not enjoyed any of it. <laughs> but hey, they're bringing Daredevil back. What so. about uh? So we're talking about entertainment stuff. So I've been watching the new Game of Thrones. Mm. Um, I like it so Game far. Of House of Dragon. I never got into. Even it. watched it. It's been fifth episodes out, bro. dude. I, I have not. I have not watched a single episode of any of that. Yeah. Of the original one. Of the original. Nope. Did you watch the original Game of Thrones? No, not a big fan of incest. <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of pushes the story yeah, along. Yeah, I suppose, but no, I've never, I've never seen a single episode of And then the, I quit watching uh, The Lord of the Rings when they did, Josh. Oh, you did? Yeah. I like it. I like uh, it. I'm one of the only people on the planet that like actually it. likes Rings of Power. And I'm yeah. shocked that I do, by You're the way. You're not one of the only people. You're one of the people that are like, you know that are making people surprised that you like it because, you know, yeah. you're Josh Mason. Uh, well, yes. yeah, I was I was shocked that I liked it because I thought I was going to absolutely tear it apart. I thought it was going to be like Last Jedi all over. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, 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 Josh thinks that, that uh, the greatest director ever is uh, Michael Bay. So. I do. Yeah. I do think he's the best director ever. Zack Snyder? <laughs> you don't like Zack Snyder? Uh, he's all right. He's, yeah. he's not as good as Michael Bay. Michael Bay makes some explosions. Yes, he and does. And he likes, he likes fancy, fancy cars and all that. So. You got bourbon over there? No, I do not. Oh. By the way, uh, Dylan, Eric Crimmins says, uh, good choice of beer. Oh, yes. Eric, you got me hooked on this stuff, man. He, he, I never, I don't think, I, actually, I did. I tried it at a restaurant with him one time. He was like, I always see Eric drinking Guinness. And I was like, you know, I don't really like beer that much. I like it, especially the light beer. It's mm -hmm. like, it just tastes like, you know, piss, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to try a darker beer. And I tried it. I was like, it's 
pretty good. Yeah, I'm not a – I mean, I'll drink – I like if it's hot. And I think this is because when I was younger, I went on some cruises and beach vacations. I'll drink a Corona. Uh, but I'm not really a big beer guy. Brian drinks a lot more beer than I do. I'm really a bourbon guy. Like, right. if I'm going to sip something, it's usually bourbon. And that's really only been the last three or four years because when I was in my 20s, I drank stuff because I thought it was cool. Like, mm. I didn't – I wouldn't tell that's what it was, but that's what it was. Like, I was drinking uh, Jaeger bombs. Oh, Whole terrible. Disgusting. Why would anybody think those are good? But I was drinking them. I was like, oh, yeah, I want a Jaeger bomb. And, uh, you know, then I evolved. Then I went through a phase where I tried to act like I liked wine, and mm-hmm. that wasn't accurate. That's definitely an acquired taste. Yeah. And Sarah now – trying to get me started on it. I was like, ah, no, no, it's not, not for me. Yeah. Well, you know, see different strokes, different folks. Right. Because I started out, like I started out on whiskey before I got beer. So you know, she's like, "How do you drink this jet fuel?" What I was is like, it? Well, small batch. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Well, cheers then. Oh, my beer's empty. But to a good wedding down the road. Good wedding down the road. Leave me hanging, Brian. And hopefully, I'm not leaving you hanging. There we go. <laughs> I like that sound. Josh is missing out. He's got That's water okay. over there. I got my water. That's all I need. <laughs> But, uh, you know, since we're on the topic of films, I wanted to also talk about the Resident Evil Netflix show. <clears throat> I watched that. The new one? Yeah. And it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. You seem to not liked it. I didn't like it at all. D- Dylan I, and I have made a far superior, well, two actually far superior Resident Evil films. Yeah, which is kind of sad for, like, Hollywood yeah, stuff. Yeah, because like, we spent, like, $5 on those movies right, and made they, them better than Netflix did. millions of dollars, and they turned this film on Netflix into, like, a Disney movie slash teenage drama slash somewhat, you know, post-apocalyptic uh, zombie film. Focus groups, man. They want to get the widest audience possible. So well, so on the zombies, since you're a horror guy, and this is I don't know a whole lot <laughs> about zombies. Resident Evil, but I know about zombies, sort of. The zombies. The original zombie movie, uh, Night <laughs> of the, the Living Dead, right? Us. Is that the original? That yes. They're coming to get you, yes. Jerry. Yeah, it is. Night of the Living Dead. And they, were to get you, Jerry. they were slow. They were slow zombies, yeah. and the whole time I was like, don't trip. As long right. as you just run, yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are they going to do? <laughs> But now you got the fast zombies. Which do you think is more authentic? Well, depends on the brain disease. Yeah, well, I also, I also think about, like, you know, because, you know, they originally they're called the undead. Mm-hmm. So if they're dead originally, they got that, you know, what's it called, rigor mortis, mm-hmm. where they're, like, stiff. That's why they move slow. That's why Jason moves slow after he dies in part uh, six. He's slow. He's a zombie. He moves really slow. That's why, you know. If you're dead and you come back to life, you're going to have Rick and Mortis still or something like that, you know, and then you'll be slow. So, I don't, you know, there's some times where running zombies is like, you know, scary because, you know, after years of exposure of slow zombies and how, what they can do when they get to you, it's like, okay, you nothing to worry about. And then they put the switch and it's like, ah, they run at you. And I was like, okay. It's like the yeah, World like, War Z zombies. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. Everybody say World War Z. Dude, yeah. World War Z was crazy. The yeah. watch. Look. I thought it was all right. I watched the movie the other day, and I forget where what it was called, but it was these zombies. When you first started, you're you're, you know, a zombie. And then they become more sentient as warm as, bodies. Yeah, something yeah. like that. I think maybe it's kind of like a romance movie. People didn't like it because it was like a lot of like uh, Twilight. They said or something like that. Yeah. I saw a, a movie theater got. Uh, well, they were said they were, might get sued the other day because <laughs> they had a group of kids in there to watch. It was like Cars or something. It was some Disney movie, uh-huh. and they played. Um, uh, what was the oh, name of that Sausage one? Party or something like that, wasn't it? No, it, it, no, not Sausage. This they played a horror movie. They oh, played like movie. The Hills Have Eyes. Oh, man. <laughs> I think great. it was The Hills Have the Eyes. The original Hills you Have can look, Eyes. You can look it up. No, the the Rob Zombie remake. Yeah. I mean, Rob oh. Zombie did it, and that one's pretty bad though. Like I watched it and had I had never. I remember the Rob Zombie movies when they started to get big, late nineties, right. two thousands. House you know? of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, and they're always yeah. there's gore, rape, all this stuff oh, yeah. in them. Can Very, you imagine bringing your kids in there and then? Nope. Uh, well, the original uh, Hills Have Eyes wasn't that. Uh, uh, oh crap, Wes Craven. No, it wasn't. Mm, I think Chris it was Craven. older than that. Yeah, it was older than that. No, um, look it up, Josh. I can't they, remember. Uh, it was. It was actually Detective Pikachu. Children accidentally shown horror <laughs> film instead of Detective uh, Pikachu. That wasn't even a good movie. Oh, God. It wasn't even scary. <laughs> what was the movie they showed instead? The Curse of La. The <laughs> Curse of La Llorona, which was actually terrible. Nice. It, was, it was very bad. It was yes. not a good. Movie. Who did the original Hill, Hills Have Eyes? Oh, I should know this. Hold on, I'll tell you. Was, I want to uh, say it was Wes Craven. It may be actually. I think it may be. Hold on. Because that's kind of where Hills you got to start. Have Hills have eyes. Uh, the guy who also did Friday the Thirteenth. They're all right around. Wait, the same it's Wes Craven, huh? Yeah. Boom. Uh, but yeah, hey, 
Tri- Tonight fun, trivia fun trivia at the cellar is on the movies. <laughs> we got rehearsal though. Uh, you do. I got to go do the trivia. Well, the whole second act, you're you're in it, man. Naked, but you're in it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got I got to go okay. do cellar. It's okay, it's Jerry. Right. I'm pretty sure you know your part. I do. I got it down. Fun fact: uh, What famous Hollywood actor starred in the original Friday the Thirteenth, the very first one? Kevin Bacon. Boom, right there. He he's got all this horror <laughs> stuff. Him <laughs> and. Uh, Eric, who's hey, watching, he, Bronson, he's big on, yeah, Corey, Bronson, Corey, all of them. All of them are big into the <laughs> horror stuff. Jerry didn't understand So this. we were talking, was it Eric was on here? Were we talking about Nightmare Sisters? Uh, might have been. I think he's the one that had the shirt at yeah. the con. Nightmare so Sisters. When I was... Uh, the Shining Sisters? 10, 10 or 11, me and his brother, inseparable best friends, right? Aaron. That's how he and I got to know each other. I was best friends with his brother. Well, we would spend the night at each other's house. And back then, and I say I'm older than you, so I don't know if you dealt with this. But we would go on the Friday, Saturday night, if you're spending the night, you go to the movie uh, ga- movie place. You'd rent a movie. You'd go in there and you look through all the movies. VHS and as a young movies. guy, you're trying to find a movie that might have some boobs in it. And so, <laughs> or, or you watch the uh, uh, the scrambled yeah, 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 channels. yeah. And See, then was... you go get your pizza and you go back and you yeah. sit there together. Yeah. So heterosexual and try to watch this. Well, <laughs> well, I didn't... So we got one called The Nightmare Sisters. Oh, okay. It was a horrible, like, D-level movie. And uh, I think it was Eric at the Comic-Con said that this horror thing they're doing, she's, he's got the woman that was in Nightmare Sisters coming as a guest. Mm. Yeah. Very, very low-budget horror film. Yeah, my exposure to nudity and horror films was just, you know, with my dad, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. so that, awkward, you know. That was well, uh, you know, that was Bronson Jerry, by the way. Was that was Bronson, Bronson had that had the, the Nightmare series. Okay, shirt, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. But, yeah. I couldn't remember who. I remember he was at the con. Nightmare Is Sisters, it? Linnea Quigley and Brink Stevens. Yeah, the thing about beef, beef flick uh, horror movies, like whenever it comes to nudity, they just come out of nowhere. Like, oh, you yeah. You don't know when to expect it. It's like, Gratuitous nudity. Yes. Rule frontal. Yeah, well, this one had, uh, I remember at one point, what, so what the storyline is, these three not really attractive college <laughs> girls are like inviting these nerdy guys over, and in the process, Michelle the nerdy Byers guys in it. She was in the uh, Married with Children. Come on now. The nerdy guys that are coming to date them are being kind of harassed by these three jock guys, right? Yeah, so course. they're coming over there to pick on them at this this nerd girl house. Anyway, in the process, I forget how it happens, but they end up getting haunted by succubus demons. <sighs> so it converts what they look like. Incubus? These, uh, incubus no, or succubus? these are succubus because they're female. Okay. I think incubus is male, right? It is male. Anyway, so then it's now these jock guys are in, interested in these succubus girls, mm-hmm. but they're interested in really any dude, really. Right. So that was kind of the storyline of it. But what I was getting at is it's so bad that it's got these sound effects. There's a scene where they're in the kitchen and they've got like a pie and it's like going, where they like making, making all these noise and stuff. Just, <laughs> Stirring macaroni. Just hindsight, it was so. But Get we, it, we Josh. loved it. We right. loved it. We loved it. We thought it was the greatest horror movie ever. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think about, you know, back in the day, all you saw were you went to the movies and Mm -hmm. whatever you saw in the movies was coming from Hollywood. Then you had, you know, back when we were kids, we had four channels, basically, ABC, CBS, NBC, and and PBS. I grew up with, with, you know, with my dad and whatnot a lot sometimes. And, you know, we only had a TV that had only four channels on it. The news that had NASCAR for him to watch and whatever else that we didn't watch and we spent most of our time you know going to blockbuster and getting movies and watching those right so you know we didn't really actually go to the movie theater that much except for the drive-in which is actually a really good experience oh, they used to have a drive-in here yeah. in i love drive in el santo lobo he said uh i had the nightmare sister shirt and he said brink steven is coming Stevens is coming to not just another horror con in Little Rock on March 4th next Ooh, year. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm actually interested in going to that. I might go to that one. Yeah. <laughs> Bring back <laughs> memories. Well, what do you think about the explosion of uh, technology and the ability for the individual creators to step forward? Because back in the day, you know, getting a record deal was, was the biggest thing because the record companies controlled, you know, a lot of that stuff and they, they paid a lot of money to get airplay on that. Now, right. hell, you just upload it to YouTube. Yeah, you, know, you, you could do a views. lot. You could do a lot more than you could back then. You can make terrible money. cosplay movies like Josh. <laughs> <laughs> the problem, hey, he's, or been, furries. He's, he's been in them. Don't or furries. <laughs> yeah. The problem, though, not, now not the ones is, he was in. Those were great. Those were great. Yeah, <laughs> just the other ones. <laughs> it's information overload, though. It is. So the problem is, it's like people are getting lost. Pe- very talented stuff, good product is getting lost in the volume. Right. Well, also, you know, people that write modern horror films think the audience is just completely stupid. They explain everything to him. 
like you know the uh, the best ones where you don't see the monster right ever that's why you know technically the first horror the first uh, Halloween was technically an independent film mm-hmm. so, that's correct and you know everything, any John Carpenter movie anything bad Meet, meeting him in May I can't wait are you really yeah he's gonna be at Texas Frightmare so oh, I'm yeah. super excited anything that ever happened you know that was bad and, you know sometimes it happened off screen you didn't even see it Eric, yeah. Eric Crimmins asked uh, Dylan what your favorite cosplay is are you a furry <laughs> God, no. Uh, my favorite cosplay. Is Josh uh, a furry? Is he secretly a furry? I'm like king. Is. I'm he, king of the furries. I've they, seen him take pictures with him. So they, <laughs> they, they love me for some reason. Yeah, I don't but, know why. But what's your yeah. costume? Yeah. Uh, well, I, well, I, I, I won't say what my he, costume is. He keeps talking about that uh, creepy panda. I, I don't know who so. that is. I don't know. I just All I know is that Pedal me and bear? Creepy. <laughs> creepy panda with creepy a smashed face. <laughs> but uh, as for Eric's question, uh it's not the most comfortable cosplay, but as of right now, it's my Darth Vader costume. I have the boots that make me really tall. I have the legit. <laughs> Bless you. You need a sneeze button or a cough, <laughs> cough button, Bless whatever you. it's called. Bless you. One more time. <laughs> Bless you. Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but it's Darth Vader. Uh, I got the legit helmet, the cape. The, everything really that's got to be really hot at, at the right. comic con were you who were you this comic not this uh, comic con the first com- covington comic con i was art the clown which is a good movie yeah that's right we're talking about horror movies y'all should watch it if you like the cold campy you know back to original back to the roots kind of gory 80s slasher film that you can see like probably on vhs killer never. clowns from outer space kind of like that actually yeah yeah uh, but it's a good movie. It's called Terrifier. They have the second one coming Terrifier. out. Yeah, Terrifier. And they have the second one coming out actually in theaters now. Uh, October 6th, I think. It's coming up soon. Uh, you all should definitely check it out, though. Uh, director is Damien Leone. And uh, I think he's done technically three. One's called All Hallows Eve, which was actually a combination of some short films he did. And he, like... Put it all together so he could like feature Art the Clown. People are like, hey, you should make a movie just about him. They said, okay, Terrifier comes out o- October six. October six. I was right. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, That's we can see what you're looking at. Terrifier, Terrifier two. two. Yeah. <clears throat> More terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be cool. That'd be a call. That'd be a callback. Terrifier two. More terrified. More. Like yeah. I like the Brian House movies back in the day. <laughs> Speaking of those, if you watch the Tarantino, I'm sure you have. Uh, see, I watched that the other night. I've, I've watched it back in the past, and it was, you know, pretty decent. Well, first it was two of them. It was a yeah, Grindhouse, Grindhouse. What was the other one? It was uh, Death, Death, Death Proof. Death and, Proof. Um, oh, what's the one where a uh, chick had the machine gun for the leg? Planet Terror. Planet Terror. Yeah. Planet, Planet Terror. Terror that's Planet Terror it. was uh, uh, Del Toro, wasn't he? It was Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then they cameoed in each other's movies. Right. So, yeah. Wasn't Bruce Willis in that one? Uh, no, that was uh, uh, crap. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah. Yeah, I felt like he was in one of those uh, uh, grindhouse movies. So we watched Madeline and I la- late, late last night after the, the Rocky practice. I get home and I'm doing my cardio again because right. I'm doing like two and a half hours a day. Anyway. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Seriously, good for you. So uh, she start, She was watching. I need you dying of a heart attack. Well, yeah. I left the play practice and went and lifted weights, and then I did my evening cardio when I got back to the house on the elliptical. Anyway, right. so it's in the living room doing the cardio. Madeline's watching uh, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. Oh, the what? Yes, it's from 1947. The I ended Bobby up watching Soxer, the whole thing. Is it kind of like uh, Reefer Madness? No, so bear with me. <laughs> you got... Uh, Cary Grant, who plays an artist who's 43, so he's my age at the time, and he has this 17-year-old girl played by, um, she played the little kid back in the day, uh, what was her name? Shirley Temple? Shirley Temple. She was played, Shirley Temple, who played a 17-year-old who was infatuated with Cary Grant. And so the cops start pursuing Cary Grant because they think he's interested in the 17-year-old and the 17-year-old's family goes, but wait, let's force them to go out together. And so she'll get over him type thing. And that's basically the whole premise of the movie. But it's just interesting how you watch these older movies and things that you could do then like you can't do today. Right. And it's the same way with a lot of these horror movies. There's certain things, it's elements you couldn't do, you couldn't get away with today. You know, people would yeah. be uh, just so appalled by it. Oh, yeah. Well, as far as making horror movies, too, there's like so much uh, information out there nowadays with like YouTube and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like, I love practical effects. I love them, like, to death. There's so many things you can do. If, like, if you wanted to make your own independent film, horror film, there's so many things you could do. I'm good, actually. 
it's in business it's cold uh, but yeah you can you could do so many things nowadays thanks to the internet and whatnot there's like these softwares you can use if you if you wanted to do special effects well, practical effects still look just as good fifty years on, yeah. whereas CGI anyway. CGI ages yeah, like no, I eggs and milk. That was <laughs> one of my complaints with Star yeah. Wars: was the newer ones just had too much CGI, and I like the dudes in yeah. the costumes. You know, yeah. I think and the Star Trooper hitting his head. Aren't y'all see all like the behind the scenes of the prequels? Like everything's green, mm-hmm. no one's there, just two people. Um, but yeah, that's probably one of the reasons why people didn't like the remake, or was it remake? Or was it a prequel of the thing? No, it was it, it was, was technically well, a prequel. Well, I no, didn't no, watch no. the well, new they, one. They did. Well, you talking about the the new? He's new talking one. about the 2011 the thing, yeah, which that, was a prequel like, to the original. There's a remake, and then there's a prequel. It Dark, was a Norwegian. Dark Carpenter's yeah. was the best, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that the one from the was okay. Is that the one from the eighties? Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, that was uh, late 79, Have you seen the original American Werewolf in London? Because that scared the crap out of me. It's been a while. Back Texas the Chainsaw Massacre scared the crap out of me. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Shining. It, Amityville Horror was the worst thing that scared me for years and years and years. Of course, I was five when I watched it. So, yeah. I think the scariest part of the movie was the end scene with the DJ yeah. underneath the staircase. The blood coming down the walls. and We got uh, James. It's kind of like here at the firm. Fike <laughs> on here, the Bluff City Batman. He wants to know when Michael Myers versus Batman's happening. Oh, yeah. I got I to gotta get on that uh, sometime soon, I'm hoping. Um well, you have to fit you into the schedule on Hey, October. James, I hope you weren't, you can comment if you hear my response, but I hope you weren't bothered by the whole budget Batman. <laughs> he knows that I don't like Batman. I'm a Superman guy. <laughs> and I did it as a joke, and it stemmed That's from going now. to this comic book thing, and I mean, going <laughs> to the GTMA thing where uh, Jeffrey Nodelman, who's the CEO yep. of GTMA, he's Good also dude. a comic book artist and an animator, and he was the lead animator for Batman the Animated Series. And so the people at the GTMA company thought it would be funny to have somebody show up as Batman because he had written he was Bruce Wayne on his thing. And that is literally where the whole budget Batman started. And when I saw it, I was like, I look like I'm budget Batman. Like joking, and I was like, budget Batman. <laughs> and so that that spiraled into now I have to be freaking budget Batman. I got a commercial coming up I have to be in. 1960s Batman. Batman. But it was no offense to people like James that are actually legitimate Batman. So what do you like about Superman? <laughs> What do I like about Superman? Yeah. I tell you what I like about oh, Superman. God. <laughs> I like I like that it's a balance. I like that he could destroy everyone like that, and he doesn't. He could leap tall buildings. That takes and uh, that takes a lot originally, of self control. Originally, Superman could not fly. No, it's true. You know, originally he was bald, and there was a bunch of them. Oh wow! The original interact mm-hmm. inter, in, in, in well, that's you know the Earth's gravity didn't affect him the way it affects us. That's well, why he could, that's why he could on, leap tall buildings. It was based on uh, John Carter of Mars. Oh, the yeah. John Carter of Mars stuff is very Which I similar. I thought was a good movie. I liked it. Well, but I'm talking about the original books. I know it's, what you're uh, talking about. Yeah. Oh, Ed, Ed, the guy that did um, Conan, it, uh, not Conan. Um, is it Edgar? Rice Burroughs. Burroughs, is yeah. Is the guy who did John Carter. Yeah. Right. And uh, he actually liked John Carter better than, I forget the one he had that took off. But anyway, the premise was Mars's gravity was lower, and so while he was there, he was stronger and could jump and leap right. because he was John Carter. And so that was a basis for Superman. Right. And uh, they also had uh, Flash Gordon was a basis. Flash All those were uh, sort of what they mixed in. James, James says he wasn't bothered. He was disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. Well, I want to get. I want to do Superman. So I saw that he goes and does a lot of. The, I think it's great. Sarah does it too, mm-hmm. and goes to the, the hospitals. Oh, yeah. For, this is her Free fiance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm lucky. With How you. do you say her last name? Uh, Fritas. 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 You can you put a little uh, roll in the arm if you want. Fritas. Fritas. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it's great when they go to the hospitals and the kids get to see them, mm-hmm. but I can't go as budget Batman, so I've got to get right. in shape where I can do Superman. That's I'll what kind of kills me. I'm going to go as Alex Ross's um, Kingdom Come Superman. And he'll have that stupid go. little yeah. curl right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something actually upset me a long time ago, back when I was like more into the cosplay sphere of people and whatnot. But like these people was like, I'm gonna do cosplay. It's gonna be like a gender bend version of this character. I'm gonna go to the, like Lavonner and stuff. It's like, I mean, that's cool and all, but you know the kids. Kids want to see their. They want to see the real. They want to see the character. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to see your. So speaking of that, let's talk about a hot button topic. Now that we're drinking oh, and we're into oh, it. Lord have mercy. <laughs> what about the Black Little Mermaid? What do you think? Uh, there was there was somebody on Twitter that got really a bunch of trouble because they're like, hey, you know, black or white, uh, Little Mermaid, whatever. The Little Mermaid was probably going to be translucent, 
or really pale. <laughs> there you go. Here, here's all I'll say about it. Living I under the sea. I, I don't care one way or the other who they cast as it. My only issue with it is the people that are crying and saying that the people that are against her being cast as a black girl, saying that those people are racist, are the same people that would be just as upset if a traditionally black character were recast as a white person. And so yeah. I have a problem not with her being cast as a black char- a, with a black actress. I have a problem <laughs> with the double standard and the hypocrisy oh, from yeah. the individuals that, you right. know, would be just as angry if you had, like, a white Black Panther or right. you had a white guy cast as Dr. Martin Luther King. Like, that wouldn't be acceptable. <laughs> you see so, that fan may post that was like uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Played by Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't have a problem with the Little Mermaid being black. The only time that stuff bothers me is when it's central to the character. So, for instance, Black Panther. I would be bothered if they cast a white dude as oh, yeah. Black Panther because Black Panther is he's a black dude. I mean, that's part of the character, right? Right. But Little he's Mermaid is a fictional country. character. There's no such thing as mermaids. Don't tell Sarah I said that. But <laughs> you know, like whether they're sure? black, white, Asian, purple, whatever. I mean, it, a lot of sailors saw mermaids. Uh, back that in doesn't the day. matter. I, I really, do agree with you though that little kids, you know, if they see the ones, especially if they grew up from, if you got like adults, even their idea in their head from being a kid is the Little Mermaid is this redheaded white girl. Right. And so now you've got a black girl that plays her, and that looks different to them. Right. But it's no different than you go in somebody's house and their Jesus is black hanging on the wall. Yeah. Dude wasn't white. No, I mean, I hate <laughs> to bring it to you. Yeah, that's what that's quite, kind of I, I've been hearing lately. Is people that say, we, uh, Middle Mermaid can't be black. And they say, people that say that they can't be black is the same people that say Jesus is white. I'm like, well, I don't say that. I don't really care. All I want is I want a Little Mermaid movie where the Little Mermaid is actually a siren and it's a horror movie. How about that? Yeah. Ooh, well, <laughs> did you see uh, Brightburn? Yeah, I actually uh, liked it. I liked it too. Yeah, I thought it was, it was basically Red Sun, is what it was. Uh, basically, Red Sun El with a Santo twist Lobo on it. Actually, cosplayed that character. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. That that was who, cool. All right, so it. Brightburn was. You got to tell me who Evil Lobo Superman. is. Off the so air. he wrote this letter to him. Oh, did you see it? Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm. Do you know who it is? I do know who it is. Okay, just tell yes. me off there. He wore a Nightmare Sister shirt. Yeah. Um, I was fixing to ask you about something else on that topic. And now I have forgotten because we've been drinking a lot of bourbon. <laughs> a lot of bourbon. You've had like two sips. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to go in a minute because I got to do trivia. Oh man, I'm we're sorry. getting good now. We got getting, we got a couple of minutes. Getting all lubricated. Yeah. John Wayne is Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah, Bob, exactly. Bob Huddleston said. <laughs> Bob, that is or, uh, an excellent observation. Both Bob. equally yeah. terrible. People. No, I mean that, that, that when they did the who was the. I'm glad you're watching, Bob. I really do. Who was the comedian that they had that did the Asian guy? And they, it was super. Oh, I know. I forget his day. name. I know who you're talking about. Now, that stuff's not cool, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, that's what I was going to say. So, James Bond, right? Uh-huh. I don't care. I think, it, I, was it Idris? I, Idris, Idris Elba. Elba. He, awesome. Yeah, he would be a great He'd be James an Bond. awesome Bond. Black right. guy, I don't care. Now, if they made him a, made a, a, a woman, woman, that's different because I've yeah. read the books. And in the books, he's a womanizing dude. Well, that's what he is. British womanizing dude. So Doesn't say he's black you, or white. I wanted to ask you that. I know talking about you know him being black. Obviously, uh, if he's like, a, do you think it's a it's a code name or is he just get James Bond all the time? There's like a conspiracy theory out there. I don't know if it's conspiracy theory, but it's like a theory out there. People think he, James Bond is either a code name or that's actually the real person. Uh, one, so in the books, they don't really go into his background much. Right. Most now there are a few discrepancies from the book and the movies. For instance, in the books, he doesn't use a Walther PPK. He uses, a, I think it's a Ruger or something. Um, there, there's just little things like that, like the martini thing and a lot of that. Some of that's movies and not books. But in the books, he's way more sexist than oh, he yeah. is in the movies. Like now, keep in mind these books are written, you know, back when uh, you smack out smack out, you know, smack out a little bit. You know, you seen Sean that Sean Connery, Connery interview? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to oh, smack her. Sometimes you got to give him a little smack. And he stuck to his guns when he got. <laughs> you got to hit her with a bag of Valencia oranges. Uh, doesn't yeah. leave a bruise unless I know who's boss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a different <laughs> and time. and the talkies. It's a different time. So. Uh, I'm fine with them, you know, switching the stuff up unless it's central to the character. So as long as James Bond is British or sounds British, you know, Scottish, Irish, something right. like that. Because Sean Connery was Scottish, Scottish I think. Yeah. 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 I'm fine with that. I don't care if he's black. But he needs to be a dude because that's central, right. central to the character. I'm going to yeah, say something and, very controversial. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ro- Roger Moore 
to me. Oh as, no, as James Bond. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. not not uh, George Lazenby. He was in one. He was in was one. It. I was like, ah, I'm out. George Lazenby is who uh, uh, the writer thought uh, the the, the broccoli. Yeah. the broccoli. The guy that wrote it, I forget. That he said he was the best. Was but I Lazenby. thought he was in the worst movie though. That on Her Majesty's he Secret was. Service is by far the worst Bond film. Yeah. You know, so the who, worst, who the who worst Bond is Bond? Pierce Brosnan. Huh? Best Bond. Uh, Roger Bond. Moore. No, yeah, I'm torn. Just because I like he Daniel was the original, the, now Daniel Craig. Daniel too. Craig, I like Daniel Craig. I think I feel like he was too. Uh, it's Pierce Brosnan. Sounds kind no. of. See, you're you're not gonna like, like what I have to pretty, say. If that makes sense, it's too pretty. Guess which Bond I grew up with? That was my James Bond growing up. It was uh, Pierce Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. So, yeah. my, and mine was Same Roger one. Moore. Yeah, <laughs> mine was Pierce too. And I remember I seeing it, uh, what was it? Halle Berry did he? The die yes. another die another day. Yeah, oh, that saw, movie was. terrible. It was terrible, but you know, it's like that's my that was that was my introduction to James Bond. And, then, and that back in I don't know if Spike is still a channel, but they had like James Bond there. Spike the marathons. Is that still is it still a channel? I have no idea. I don't know. They used to do the UFC on Spike. Yeah, all yeah. the time. Did I they? remember that was like the man's channel. <laughs> the man had all the action. Actually, actually had the man. Do you remember show. the man show? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the man, man show. show had uh, Jimmy Fallon oh, and my God. Uh, no, Adam Jimmy Carolla, Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel, and Adam Carolla. Yeah, he's like two complete opposites. I was gonna say, yeah, we're talking about a hypocrite. Yeah, oh man, you couldn't do that nowadays. Please don't cancel me. It opened with girls like jumping on trampolines. Yes, remember? Yes. That was the opener. It's like we know what dudes like. You like this, don't you? Could yeah. they make Blazing Saddle? Well, look today? here. Look here's the no, problem. Let, definitely let me, not. Let's not, go back to and, and Blazing side. Saddle was the ultimate satire. Blazing Saddle. Let's and go back to Thunder. his. Uh, I want to go back to something he Mel, said. Mel Brooks. In jest. Mel Brooks. Now, Mel, Brooks, Mel Brooks did. Yeah, John you can, couldn't do that stuff now. You imagine Blazing Saddles nowadays? That's what we just said. No. Yes. No. Not no, but you just history of the world part one. You just said... Uh, I'm still waiting for part two. You just said... Uh, I forget That's now joke, what you Jerry. said. I've forgotten. It's gone. Play it back. Waited too long. <laughs> waited too long. It's I can't. Gone. Don't work that way. Lost. And I'm enjoying having some We're guys doing it live! I, I, gotta, I gotta go do this trivia stuff. So. Oh, man. You don't really have to. Can't wait to see I mean, Bruce. Does Pierce the kicking Bronson lawyer have to be fake. here? For the kick and lawyer show. No, y'all can keep going. I don't care. That's fine. We do like Joe Rogan does. Joe Rogan will get up and leave, and the people keep talking. There you go. I don't care. Yeah. The best one was the one with. You got to uh, go to play practice though. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. I, I got to go. Twenty five minutes. Mm-hmm. I got to go home. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to say fritas, fritas, fritas. So that's that's why you were talking about the wedding. Yeah. yeah Congratulations, yeah. my friend. I actually I want to finish it off by talking about my beautiful young fellow. There you well, go. Go ahead. Tell us about your beautiful lady friend. She is. Uh, <laughs> Did you say lady friend? She is overly humble, and it kind of irritates me sometimes because she is so talented. Mm-hmm. She I don't know if y'all know, but she plays the violin. I didn't know that. Yep. See exactly. She's very unassuming. Yeah. She also plays the piano sometimes. I, she has practiced been practicing as much because she's always busy with the book. So she's written books, obviously. Mm-hmm. She's, she's an art. She's an author. She's also a regular artist. She, you know, draws and whatnot. And did I mention that she's a model? Technically, in my eyes, and she anyone is. else's she's eyes, modeled, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's, she's a model, but she doesn't see herself as a model because of the fact, you know, she's the most unassuming these, person I've ever met. Yeah, I mean, run, that, and that's saying a lot. These runaway models that she talks about, because like you know, supposed to be like you know, it's like a height limit or a height minimum she's supposed to be in order to be the, a runaway model. Is like you could blow them out, blow them out the water. Is it's it? the same thing as the uh, Rockettes. Well, uh, there's... one of the girls that I was in 1776 with was auditioning for the Rockettes, and she was like 6'4". There's I mean, a lot yeah, of people, though. That's one thing I found with people. You can't be too tall, though. People that are super talented, I found that as a common uh, thing. They don't tell people a lot of times, and they are very humble about it to the point of no confidence even. Right. And... Um, I mean, my wife, she's super talented. She's very intelligent. And then people know about me. They think, oh, "Oh, that's Jerry's wife. But they don't realize, really, I'm Madeline's husband. Because she's much better than I am. Um, I'm just good at I'm just good at running my mouth. I'm so yeah. She's she's up here right here, and I'm like down here. She's like a twelve. I think we're all like like that. I mean, Laura's like a tippity tippy top. Yeah, for sure. We're all losers. Rap scallion. We're all losers, and we got lucky. We're with very uh, lucky. Better women. Better women. I can't tell you how many. Crappy if I were gay, I'd have the best dude ever. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, if? <laughs> Look how red I've gotten from drinking your bourbon, bro. bro I need my so bourbon. I'm over here sweating. Are you a lightweight? No, I'm not. Actually, no. Now that, that being partnered with Brian Huffman, I'm pretty solid. Uh, so tell everybody where they can find you at, Dylan. Absolutely. 
Well, I have a TikTok that I don't really post on. I'm probably going to try to start doing some voice stuff on there once I, you know, how to talk and whatnot. But my TikTok is Darth Wesker. And Darth Wesker? Yeah. W-E-S-K-E-R? Yes. yes. Like the Resident Evil character. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I have a Instagram, which is Psychotic Cosplays, Psychotic underscore Cosplays. And that's pretty much all I have. I actually wanted to do some shout outs for some friends of mine. There you go. <laughs> That's hey, a great that shout it. out. <laughs> when I was that lieutenant, was we drank nothing but Guinness, just p- pint after pint after pint. So, see uh, one thirty's flying around the world. For best best anyone, job in the world. Anyone interested in listening in or co-hosting? Actually, because there's a Memphis podcast that's looking for a co-host. It's called Geek Goons Podcast. They're looking for somebody to uh, co-host with them, and they also. What do they have to be able to do? Uh, anybody that's in the uh, cosplay community, the geek community, anybody that wants to talk about pop culture, or is it even considered pop culture anymore? Uh, it's pretty mainstream now. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of sad, in my opinion. I don't like how it's mainstream. I'm like, it's ruined, man. Yeah, I'm not the original all these normies hipster. coming in. I'm a hipster, <laughs> man. Um, also, don't be a uh, hipster. Let's see, the uh, my friends' uh, motorcycle organization, uh, Combat Veterans. They are doing their fourth annual Vettober Poker Run on Saturday, October 1st. It is going to be starting at South uh, Southern Thunder Motorcycle, or Harley-Davidson Motorcycle. Uh, starts at 9.30. That's in Mississippi. First, right, first bike ride out is at 9.30 a.m. So if y'all want to support your veterans and... Do you still have your motorcycle, Jerry? I do still have a motorcycle. And we then, should ride on it and you can ride... <laughs> can you say... On the, the Facebooks. Oh, well, I did. guess you, you can did. now. Apparently you can. <laughs> All right. Well, Dylan, thank you for being here. You it know, I, I've often wondered, because you do have a very attractive, very talented fiance. Oh, yeah. And much. I was like, how did Dylan get her? But, you know, now that I've hung out with you, I get it. Because you're cool. He's dude, a good man. dude, man. Yeah, Come he's on. He's a good dude. He likes, he likes all the do cool Do you stuff. have any upcoming projects? I mean, you may have talked about this before I got here, but do you personally have any upcoming projects uh if well, so what are they it's kind of secret but i'm oh, actually well, working well then on, don't bring don't working on two scripts for josh over there that's right oh, and, and I, he knows about one but not the other one and, the other one's gonna be a big surprise and after the podcast i've got something else i gotta talk to you about dylan about oh. some upcoming when are we gonna do the <laughs> hundred I, we, no it's it's the opposite i've got something you gotta else come, to brian on. you need to be on the hundred episode when and you that? need to bring where we can drink and smoke bourbon for yeah. four hours instead of go. an hour. That, that'd be fine. Yeah, it's when October, is it? October 11th. October 11th. Yeah. Okay. It's the, and we're doing a fundraiser for the Ruffin. That's okay. what it is. So. Are we doing it at the Ruffin? No, I'm doing it here. Yeah, we have. Because I don't want to move the all band. the stuff. Well, we got the bandwidth here. I don't, they don't, I don't have move all the stuff. Yeah, well, Josh has got whatever plan, but you could just be on it the whole time. All right, last question I've got for you, sir. Okay, you got to hurry up because I got to go, Brian. I'm going to be late for my own trivia. It takes you two minutes to go over the hill. I got to go change. I'm not going to wear a suit. What? Anyway. Have you seen, you've seen it, have you seen on YouTube, there is an internet series way back in the day, back in the day, like 2012, uh, it's a, uh, Australian film students put together this thing for a project for class called Italian Spider-Man. I've seen it. <laughs> I thought it was an actual thing. I thought it was like an actually. Well, they, they made, they made a, a short and then they expanded it out into like a, oh. a Okay. Not a feature-length movie, but like you know, whatever the forty-five-minute version of a movie is. I guess it's it's too long to be a short, but it's not long enough to be a feature-length. Okay. Anyway, so if you haven't seen Italian Spider-Man, go to YouTube, watch <laughs> Italian Spider-Man, watch the trailer, and then watch the movie. It's hilarious. When are we going to do a kicking lawyer version of that, where there's a trailer, and then there's like five different. Portions so of the I, movie. I want to direct the Kick and Lawyer movie, and I want to make it just like those really it? bad Indian Bollywood movies, <laughs> yes, where he's that's like exactly what I'm overly super powered and can yes. like kick a car, and the car go flying through the air and explode. Yes. And just have y'all seen? Can uh, I be in that? What is that? It's one? gonna it's gonna be me, Dave, the Big Germ, Ross, R R R R. Yeah. Have y'all seen that? It's triple X. I love Bollywood. You need to watch R R R instead of Triple X. You should watch it. It's it's pretty over the top. You know, that's the best form of dancing that I like is Bollywood dancing. I, I, I'm telling you what, I didn't like any of it till I watched RRR. Bollywood was, is awesome, man. Yeah. But all right, I'm I'm sorry to tie it up because we're having so much fun with all our bourbon and cigars. But I got damn you, man. Trivia. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff across uh, podcast and social media platforms. We're on TikTok. Josh dances naked on them. It's great. <laughs> 
We have our hundredth episode coming up October eleventh. Put that Brian, on my calendar. Brian's gonna be here, and put it's it on gonna my be okay. Put it on his calendar, Josh, and it's gonna be <laughs> over the top raising oh, yeah, money you, for you charity. Can put it on my calendar. I can. Hell yeah. Uh, Michelle Allen, our longtime sponsor, uh, is your go-to for uh, for cry like realtor. If you're buying, selling, renting real estate, she'd be glad to help you. <laughs> Mason's Sonic Team Martial Arts. I own that place. Come and we will kick you in the face. How long have you been doing that? 90. I started martial arts when I was six. Oh, wow. Uh, cellar, restaurant prohibition bar. Look at my head. That's my favorite part when Josh does it and the head's like. <laughs> His head goes floating across. Place, yeah, the, the cellar. <laughs> thank you. Steak. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed it. Very much the so. cellar. I'll be there here in like 10 minutes and I'll be drinking more bourbon. It'll be great. It'll be a great trivia night. And then, of course, Josh will help you at Mason Knight Digital Marketing. So I want to thank my guests, Dylan Scott, for joining us and Brian for trickling in here. I always uh, do that. It, it, it was a lot of fun. We'll get Dylan back on here, and we can drink more Guinness and bourbon. And it'll, we it'll need to have a two-hour event because there's so many things I want to talk about. Well, we're doing the uh, – I, I like I, – originally, I wanted to do these like three, four hours. But the problem is, is so much stuff's going on with these other businesses oh, yeah, that you're a busy you, man. I have a time limit, so I apologize. Because I, I enjoyed – we could hang out, Dylan. Just yeah, friends, yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your week. Uh, next week, we may have Ed Doyle. Yeah, no, he confirmed. He'll be here. Next okay, week. we'll have Ed Doyle next week, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Keep kicking. I'm going to talk over the outro because I can't. Don't talk over the outro. I'm talking over the outro. <laughs> <laughs>